Did Mercedes end their dominant weekend with a 1-2? Could Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel somehow beat Mercedes? And could Red Bull from the back achieve a good result? Find out in this video. For the race on Sunday there was a possible chance of rain as one of the support races in the morning was held in wet conditions. But it dried up enough for a decent Russian Grand Prix, where Mercedes got a 1-2. Lewis Hamilton wins from Valtteri Bottas second, Sebastian Vettel third, Kimi Raikkonen fourth and Max Verstappen in P5. And then it's Ricardo P6, Leclerc in P7, Magnus in P8, Ocon P9 and Perez in P10. And then P11 to P15 is Roman Grosjean, Nico Hülkenberg, Marcus Eriksson, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll. With Van Dorn, Sainz and Sorokin last of all the finishers. And the two retirements were the two Toro Rossos. Now though, let's see how the top teams did in the race. After a fantastic qualifying, Mercedes got exactly what they needed in the Grand Prix. A well-managed 1-2 finish. And it was Lewis Hamilton taking the win even though he wasn't massively proud of it. Because of course his teammate Bottas had to let Lewis through for Lewis to get that win. But still at the end of the day, a win is a win. Lewis though still had to fight for what he got. Pulling off a great overtake on Sebastian Vettel at turn 4. After Vettel jumped Hamilton in the only round of pit stops. He was so close to creaming into the back of Vettel at turn 2 but he avoided a crash and followed Sebastian very closely through turn 3, and got a great run down to turn 4 where he dived down the inside. A superb move by Lewis, but again he still wasn't massively proud of his race win. This is what he said after the race. It's weird to feel down, but we've also got to feel grateful to the guys back at the factory. So many people are working flat out to make sure we have a 1-2 like this. The team have just done an incredible job this weekend. And I agree they have. We thought Mercedes might be quick at this race, but nowhere near as quick as they were for example in qualifying. For obvious reasons though, for Valtteri Bottas it was disappointing, as pretty much he deserved to win the Russian Grand Prix, as in the race he was slightly better than Lewis. But of course team orders had to happen. Now I completely understand why people are criticising this case of team orders. But for me, they had to do this. They have to try and wrap up the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships as soon as possible. Thus why they did what they did. Yes, Lewis was still going to gain points on Vettel, but that is not the point. Because if, let's say, here in Russia, Lewis was not let through by Bottas, if Vettel by some miracle wins the championship by 6 points, then they would have massively regret not letting Lewis through. Again, thus why they did what they did. I'll be honest guys, I don't like team orders, but it is completely necessary, and it will lead to a successful 2018. But despite the disappointment, Bottas was still upbeat. This is what Valtteri had to say. I know that today I was supposed to win, and I could have won the race on equal terms. I know myself I am the winner of this weekend. I don't have the trophy, but it doesn't matter. That's how it is, and I move on. And Valtteri here is right. He was the winner of this weekend. He deservedly got pole and was deserving of getting the win. And as you can see here with Bottas, he did have a very good race. For example, he went on to set the fastest lap. Also, he was comfortably leading in the first stint. And for about half of the Grand Prix, he was ahead of Lewis. Clear proof for me that he did deserve to win. But of course, what happened, happened. But as we now go to Suzuka, Mercedes are in such good form, and right now look very hard to beat. Despite the race pace of the Ferrari being better compared to qualifying, they still did not have enough pace to beat Mercedes, but they tried all they could. In the first stint, Sebastian Vettel was not too far behind Bottas and Hamilton, after failing to pass Hamilton at the start, but then Ferrari went for the undercut on Hamilton. And for Ferrari, for once it did work, as Vettel did jump Lewis. But very soon after, Lewis then passed Vettel at turn 4. And after Bottas let Hamilton into the lead, there was no way Sebastian was going to win the race. Ferrari, quite frankly, did not have enough. And Vettel realised that too. This is what he said. Today the feeling with the car was very good and I was able to push. 
but I just wasn't as fast as the others. Obviously today it was better than yesterday in terms of pace, but it wasn't enough to put pressure on our competitors. We tried everything and I am happy that we got a podium finish, but obviously this is not the result we were looking for. I'm afraid there was not enough pace from Ferrari when it mattered. And for Kimi Raikkonen, he went on to have a quiet race, finishing in an undisturbed P4. All weekend, Kimi has been way too far off his teammates and the two Mercedes. Thus why Kimi has basically been mediocre. But for Ferrari going forward in both championships, I think now their chances are over. That's because of too many blown opportunities. Hopefully somehow Ferrari can have a positive end to 2018. In the race, Red Bull got the best result they possibly could have, with P5 for Max Verstappen and P6 for Daniel Ricciardo. Their pace though was quite impressive, as Max Verstappen early on flew his way up into the top 5, and then had some good and impressive pace on his soft compound tyres. And for a long part of the race he was actually leading, but of course eventually he did have to pit, which is why he ended up finishing in 5th. He was for sure at least one of the drivers of the day, and by the sounds of it had a happy race on his birthday. Verstappen said after the race, Today was better than expected, so I hope that the rest of the races this season will also be better than we expect. I enjoyed myself out there, and this is a good result for my birthday. It absolutely was. And despite starting at the back, Verstappen was still very competitive with Mercedes and Ferrari as his fastest lap of the race was only half a second behind Bottas. More impressive though was how he fought his way through the field in the opening laps. By lap 8 he went from P19 to P5. A truly amazing start from Max. I guess you could say if only he did not have any penalties. For Daniel Ricciardo his race was okay. I think he did the best he could in finishing in P6. As Verstappen is faster around this circuit. He did though have a front wing problem during the Grand Prix and had to replace his front wing at his only pit stop. But despite that problem I still think he would have finished in 6th. He just wasn't fast enough. But Sunday for sure for Red Bull was good. Now though let's look at the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton now leads by 50 points from Sebastian Vettel in 2nd with Valtteri Bottas now P3. Raikkonen has dropped down to P4 with Verstappen in 5th and Daniel Ricciardo in 6th. For me now, Vettel has no chance. Lewis will win his fifth world title. But now let's see how the midfield teams did. Starting off at McLaren. This will go down as one of McLaren's worst weekends of 2018. Because you could argue they were just as slow as Williams. How times change after that great result in Singapore. But to be fair, this track was never going to suit the McLaren. In Sochi, no strength about their car is going to work well, so it was always going to be terrible. And for Suzuka, I don't see this changing. Renault, in terms of the strategy, were looking good on race day, starting on the favourable soft compound tyre. But their race did not go to plan. One for Nico Hülkenberg, who after pitting struggled for pace, despite being on fresher and softer tyres after he ran massively long into this Grand Prix. And for Carlos Sainz, his race was destroyed after contact with a Williams. This is what he had to say about it. At the start, I got away from the line really well on the soft tyre, and was past a couple of cars. However, I got hit by a Williams in turn two. And, even though I didn't feel much, the floor and the side of the car was destroyed, and that made it really difficult to drive. So that's why he finished down in P17. His race was severely compromised. But for me, like McLaren, this has to be one of Renault's worst weekends of 2018. They were just never competitive. And were way off Haas and Force India. And to be honest, were quite embarrassingly far back. Renault have to find some pace ahead of the next Grand Prix. Their fourth in the Constructors is now massively under threat. It was an okay race for Force India, getting a double points finish after their massively disappointing Singapore Grand Prix. So maybe you could argue this race was good, but there was one massive issue on Sunday. The two Force Indias were held up by Kevin Magnussen for the entire race. 
Ocon tried to pass and failed. They even swapped Ocon and Perez to try and fight back against K-Mag. But not even that worked. So they put Ocon ahead of Perez again and finished in P9 and P10. Force India were definitely quicker than Haas. If only the dirty air wasn't so bad they would have been past Magnussen quite easily. But sometimes that's just the way it is. And Suzuka for Force India should be good. Other than contact with Carlos Sainz, it was a quiet race for Williams. As like McLaren, they were not quick enough. But it's not a massive shock. Another forgettable race for this great team. Toro Rosso were hoping for some kind of decent result in Sochi. But those hopes were dashed very quickly. As both cars in the first five laps suffered brake failures. A very short Russian Grand Prix for Toro Rosso to say the least. Next up though is basically their home race in Suzuka, where Honda are expecting to do well. So don't be surprised if they're scoring points very soon. After a great result in qualifying for Haas, the race again like Singapore was not that great, even though Kevin Magnussen did hold on to P8. But again, he held on to that position. Barely from the four Indians of Esteban Ocon and Sergio Perez. I think in terms of race pace, the Haas is just not good enough. Because Grosjean, especially in the first stint, was so poor. And was one of the first to pit for new tyres. I think the issue here for Haas is the tyres. They, they are just wearing them out too quickly. And let's compare their qualifying to their race. They were 5th and ninth with both drivers in qualifying. But in terms of the order of fastest laps in the Grand Prix, they were P8 and P10. Now yes I know that's not massively bad and is still quite good, but in the first stint of the race they were one of the slowest in the midfield. Haas have to work on this problem. At least though they did close the gap to Renault in the constructors. And with the next race being Suzuka, Haas could now gain even more points on Renault. With Charles Leclerc at least, Sauber converted a great qualifying to a great race. As Leclerc finished where he qualified in a fantastic P7. Marcus Ericsson's pace though was not too special, as he simply was not fast enough to stay in the top 10. But P13 for him is not exactly a bad result. Let's hear though from Charles Leclerc about his great race result. He says, I am very happy with the result today. It was a great race with a strong strategy, and a car that felt very good to drive. The overtakes at the beginning of the race were on the limit, but they helped us to finish the race in P7. To score such a result for the first time this season feels amazing and is a good reward for all of the hard work we put in week after week. And not just in the race but for the entire weekend Leclerc was so good, again qualifying 7th and finishing 7th. And his fastest race lap was very competitive as well. Now you can see why Ferrari picked him. He is for sure an up and coming superstar. And I can't wait to see him in that Ferrari. Before I go though, let's look at the constructors standings. Mercedes are running away in first with Ferrari second and Red Bull in third. Let's be honest, Mercedes are going to beat Ferrari. Then it's Renault in fourth, now only 11 points ahead of Haas for fifth. With McLaren P6 and Force India in P7. Hopefully Haas continue to close that gap. And then it's Toro Rosso in 8th, Sauber in 9th and Williams in 10th. But Sauber are a lot closer to Toro Rosso. That's going to be an interesting battle for the last 5 races. But guys that's it for the 2018 Russian Grand Prix. The race actually wasn't too bad in terms of entertainment. The first 20 laps actually were quite good. So I guess you could say, well done Russia, but I still hate this track. But for Lewis Hamilton in this world championship, when it now comes to winning his fifth world title, it's now a matter of when, not if. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back in about two hours time with a live Q&A on the channel. And as well, don't forget guys to join my Discord server, there's a link below down in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what did you think of the race for the 2018 Russian Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazar HD. goodbye.